So in this presentation, we are going to see about the slip form construction. Uh, so coming to the, the content of this presentation, it, has, uh, it starts with an introduction. Next one is the development of slip form construction, the types of slip form construction, and we are going to see about the applications, the advantages of slip form construction techniques, and what are the disadvantages of the slip form construction technique, and what are the uses of slip form work, and finally we conclude with the summary. So coming to the uh, introduction of slip form construction, if you see the features of the slip form construction, the slip form construction technique is a rapid and an economic construction method compared to the other conventional form work. So this helps to achieve huge cost saving. So the technique is best suitable for large building structures and bridges. When small structures are concerned, the projects with identical geometry can be easily completed by the slip form construction. So the slip form construction is a continuous moving of form work in the upward direction. The movement is facilitated by the hydraulic jacks and the jack props. In the construction of vertical structures, the rating of rise for form work upward will almost be the rate of 200-300 mm per hour. So if you see the uh, slip form construction technique, so it is an alternative technique for the conventional form work system which helps in continuous vertical and the horizontal construction. The slip form helps to conduct uh, continuous pouring of concrete to the moving form work. So the process only stops when the required length of the casting is completed. So if you see the uh, development of the slip form construction, so the slip form construction um, uh, is uh, started, it was, it, it was used in the early 20th century for building silos and uh, green, uh, green elevators. So uh, James McDonald of Chicago was the pioneer in using, utilizing the slip form construction. So the, his, his concept of placing the uh, circular bins in a cluster uh, was patent and it was, uh, it was the uh, basic for the uh, design of the slip form construction. So the technique was first introduced to the residential and the commercial building in the late 90s. 1960. So one of the first use in the high-rise building that the United States was on the uh, shareholder supported apartment built on turf. So uh, if you see the properties of a silicon construction, the properties of cement and concrete to gain sufficient strength to see, stay in shape on cast with initial setting time of 30 minutes lead to the development of the slip form construction technique. So if you see the components of the uh, slip form construction technique, so the components of the slip form construction, the slip form system is defined, designed with varied features. Generally, it consists of a yoke legs. So the yoke legs are uh, employed to lift and sustain the weight of the entire structure so that it behaves like a single unit. So the yoke leg also used to connect with the beams, scaffoldings and working platform to serve the supporting purposes. To the yoke lift, the walkway brackets are connected. So these brackets will enable your, the proper placement of the concrete. So the whole slip form assembly is lifted, lifted by the means of the stranded rods and the lifting jacks. So the primary components are located at equal intervals so that the uniform and good distribution of the weight is performed. So in some construction, lifting process, uh, lifting process are supported by the means of the hydraulic pump components. So if you see the components of this form construction, so it consists of the sheeting for the vertical form work. So the uh, main purpose of this vertical form work uh, is the vertical form work can be uh, wood staves, metals, plywood, uh, glass fiber, reinforced plastics or a combination of these materials. So the function of this vertical form work is to shape the concrete. So the next one is your base. So the base is also an important component of the uh, slip form construction. So it holds, it holds the vertical forms in place. So it's also act as a uh, platform, uh, supporting platform, uh, supporting support for the various platforms and the scaffoldings. Next one is your yoke legs. So the yoke leg is the component of the vertical slip form. It supports the base at regular interval with the legs. Next one is the jacks. So the jacks is installed in the yoke leg. Uh, so the various platforms, decks and the scaffolds complete the slip form constructions which provides complete space for the storage of concrete, reinforcing seat and bedding. So the jack rods are used for, uh, is a climbed up by the 
jacks. So next one, the types of slip form construction. So if you see the types of slip form construction, we have a vertical slip form construction, horizontal slip form construction, cantilever jump form method, egg-shaped slip form system, and a polygon system. So we'll see one by one. So first we start with the uh, vertical slip form construction. So the vertical slip form construction, uh, the vertical slip form system surrounds the concrete form with the platform that allows the workers to work safely while standing. The hydraulic uh, jack raises the concrete form and the working platform. So several types of hydraulic lifters are available to lift the form on the horizontal projection. So if the vertical is a slip form, there is no need to erect any scaffoldings. So it has a work platform which is permanently attached at the top of the vertical slip form and they are suspended from inside and outside and they are light in weight. So the, if you see the vertical slip form construction, it is a continuous uh, construction which is uh, sliding in the upward direction. So next one is your cantilever slip form method. So, uh, so this is the easiest method and it is a mostly adopted method for the uh, construction of uh, bridges. So the climbers are independent of cranes attached in the large framework at stories. So it is independent of cranes for walls, columns and supports. So a yeah, motor lifts and the expands, uh, motor lift and expands the framework in the country with the jump framework. As a result, uh, this framework attached directly to the story height to reduce the so next one is your egg-shaped slip form system. So, um, so the egg-shaped uh, uh, slip form is based on the jump form principle that can be adapted to any geometry system. So if the circumference, if you have any uh, differential circumference, so this method is adopted. So the cantilever plates on the periphery is removed and extended and the individual curvature adjustment can be obtained by adjusting the axis and the vertical circumferential slope. So this system can be indi adjusted independently on either sides of the wall as well as the product optimal working condition. So it shows a clear uh, saving in time and the personal cost. So next one is your conical shift slip form construction. So the conical uh, form of work is a system by which it is possible to construct structures of varying thickness and tapering walls. So it also uh, used when you have a uh, changing geometry from angular to circular. So the conical form is made up of uh, cantilever plates and overlapping plates which are fastened by which are fastened to steel yoke frames. So the cantilever plates and the overlapping plates automatically adjust the form of geometry. <laughs> so the conical form consists of a cantilever and overlapping plates having conical shapes and safe working area for the labor, engineering and this So if you see the applications of lipsons to construction, so, the, so it is mainly used for the construction of regular <coughs> core array structures, slip form techniques for uh, chimney construction, construction of steel tank, <coughs> construction of water. So if you see the advantages of slip form construction, so it is a uh, it gives a provision for the jointless structure, a saving of shuttering materials, initials, and also the sa saves the cost. Scaffolding is not required. Very rapid concreting. It is at least four times faster. Better finishing of concrete. Reduced labor cost. Slip form construction does not require a crane. Minimizing crane use. No plastering is required. Accuracy is more than the regular form work. Strength is more than the regular form work. Save form work materials, economic for structures above a certain size. If you see the, although it has some uh, advantages, there are some disadvantages also in this uh, slip form construction. So if you see the disadvantages of slip form construction technique, it has a high initial cost. So, uh, so its installation requires a longer time. You have, you should, uh, there should be an, it needs an experienced and skilled labor uh, for the uh, uniform movement of the slip form system, um, while the material uh, stroking is stroking is difficult on the site, so the good coordination on the site organization is required. So the large quantity of equipment is uh, 
needed for the erection of this, for the construction, for the uh, execution of this look on construction. Uh, the operation must be continued in any weather. It cannot be stopped when you have a differential weather condition. Still, the labor force is required for the uh, operation of this equipment and the methods. So it has to place a high initial expense. So uh, finally, as you see, this is a two-form construction. So two-form construction uh, is widely used for construction of large towers and bridges. It is also used for the construction of silos and grain elevators. So the techniques of stiff form construction are also better applied for the nowadays that the technique of stiff form construction is also applied for the road construction. So if you see the economic consideration, uh, uh, so the slip form uh, is preferable when the height uh, when the structure when the height of the structure is a minimum of 16 meter height. The thickness of the wall should be a minimum of uh, 15 centimeter. This system is only suitable for structures like silos, cooling towers, chimneys, tall buildings, and piers. So, if you see the safety aspects of slip form construction, the slip form guardrails, ladders, and winches should be built into a complete system. The complete formwork assembly is robust and strong enough. The strength of the concrete must be checked at certain time intervals. The site supervisor must be familiar with health and safety aspects of their job site. So take care all take care the all form parts move to the new form rate should be in jo no jam in the form work of the assembly. So if you see the summary of slip form construction. So with the invention of slip form construction technique and due to speedier completion of work by the technique, there are substantial saving in the cost in terms of wages and interest. So this technique has no compromise against quality control and homogeneity of the structure. The saving cost will not appear simultaneously or uh, will not appear automatically just because the form has been used. So this technique has a lot of scope for improvement, but it can be adopted for tall frame structures only. For slip form work, ordinary concreting of M20 to M25 and rarely M30 can be used. Generally, post Portland cement is used for concreting, fast setting cement in special piece work during winters and slip form for progress is chosen. After dismantling the slip form component, it can be used to for span more than 25 years. This is all about the slip form construction. The slip form construction is an advanced method of construction where you don't have your ordinary scaffoldings and it's a faster method of construction.